Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in the last video, we talked about hacks on pending transactions that come from the mempool. Now we're gonna look at how to pull back those pending transactions. So this is gonna be a coding one. Uh, last one was a learning one. And it's gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna pull back those pending transactions and we're gonna parse them out so you know how to work with them programmatically. Now we're starting out with our template that we created many moons ago in previous videos. So if you haven't seen that, check that all out and let's get started. So here's our template. I'll give you a quick refresher. We're doing our uh, require.env to pull back our environment variable, which has our Infura ID that connects us to the blockchain, right? And then we're going to import ethers in our template, which we use to interact with the blockchain with ethers.js, hence the name of this series, you know, blockchain basics with ethers.js. Then we create our provider from Infura, and that's gonna pull back our process environment variable that we imported with .env, and then we have a provider to work with. Now, once we have that provider to work with, we're gonna utilize that to pull back our transactions from the blockchain. And we do that using Infura, which is kind of a bridge into the blockchain through their nodes. Now we can do that many other ways with our own nodes with Geth or some other service, pocket network, something like that. But we're using Infura because it's easy to set up for you guys for these tutorials. Okay, so let's get rolling in here. So here's our template. We need to modify some things. So let's call our function that we're going to actually grab all this stuff, get pending because that makes sense, right? Get pending. And let me actually save this to something new. I'm gonna actually revert that. And we're just gonna create a new file. So that way we uh, are not working off our template here. So I'm gonna go, we'll call it getpending.js. We'll save that, paste that in here. And then now let's get rolling. Okay, cool. So we'll say get pending and that's the name of our function that we're going to call so we need to where we're calling our function also name it that otherwise we can't call it properly so when we call that in the very beginning of the program it hops into our function that does something i'm trying to teach this as we go too because javascript is kind of screwy and not everybody's a coder but this again is a basic series so um, we're not going to get super deep but we're going to give you some good learning on this so let's first use our provider and we'll kind of subscribe to those pending transactions. We'll say provider dot on, and we're gonna grab the pending, and we're gonna make this an asynchronous function so that it waits for it to return, and then we can get our data and utilize it. So we'll say async and tx hash is what we're gonna name what's coming back here. And we'll say an arrow function, which is just one of those JavaScript things. They have a thousand ways to do functions. All right, so now we have that asynchronous uh, call there and we're gonna put our stuff all in there, what we're working with. All right, transaction, because what we're pulling back is our transaction. And we're gonna say await provider. And we're gonna say we wanna get the transaction, right? So get transaction that makes sense there and what are we getting we're grabbing our tx hash because this is going to pull back it's going to you know subscribe here it's going to grab the transaction hash from the pending queue and then it's going to grab that transaction hash and it's going to get the transactions uh, from that so let's see this should be good constant transaction await Provider.getTransaction, TX hash. Okay, cool, that should be good. And then what we're gonna wanna do that I figured out, you know, trial and error is we're gonna need to wrap this in something that looks for null values because if this starts processing when we're trying to print stuff out and it tries to print a null value, it's just gonna die on you. So we can just handle that really easy with if transaction, and I just learned this because I started getting null values back and things were crashing. I looked at the errors. I was like, oh, you know, cannot process null or something like that. So I was like, okay, let's just say, hey, you know, if the transaction is null or if the transaction is not null because that's what that little uh, bang sign means there, then uh, we can process this. If it is null, we're just gonna skip it and 
you know, just continue on. So what we're gonna say here is we're just gonna console.log and what do we wanna log out? Well, we want to log out this transaction that we're pulling back so we can see what's in there, right? Makes sense. So we can just log out that whole thing. We don't really need to parse anything yet. So transaction. Okay, now this should work technically. And we'll make sure we get everything lined up. We have a closing brace, opening brace. Yep, that closes that. That one closes that. And this one should close the whole thing. Okay, perfect. So what's happening here, we'll do a quick overview. We're calling our pending transaction function as soon as this starts. And we're gonna hop in our function and we are going to grab the pending, grab the transaction hashes on that. Now we have that variable to work with there that comes back from that arrow function. And within here, we're gonna say, okay, we wanna get the transaction from that transaction hash and we're gonna wait for that using our provider, which connects to the blockchain. And when it grabs that transaction, we're gonna put it in this transaction variable. Then we're gonna make sure that that transaction is not null. So that way it doesn't blow up our program. If it is null, it's just gonna keep going and not go in this if statement. If you're not familiar with if statements, then learn a bit of programming, but really it just says, hey, if it's not this, continue on. Um, because we have that not symbol right there, which is the bang. And then we're gonna say, hey, let's log out this transaction. So let's do this now. Now we're gonna hop into our terminal. If you have not put your Infura ID into your Infura underscore WS variable, make sure you do that with the export. Infura underscore WS and make that equal to your actual variable from within Infura. If you don't know how to do that, hop back in the previous videos, it'll show you how to do it. So we're just going to run our program now. It should pull back the transactions. Let me make this a little bit bigger here so you can see it. All right, so we are going to say node and it's get pending and this technically should work. All right, we have await provider. Await is only value a valid in an async function. Okay, so we are in an async function. Okay, I see what's going on. So we have our async function here, but we need to actually async uh, right here. So we'll say after pending async because when we grab this transaction hash, we need to kind of wait for it and then we can work with that transaction hash variable there. So let's hop back in here and this should work now. And there we go, we have our transactions. Um, so we can hit control C here and we take a look at what's in here. And, and note that I had an error, I just read the error. I was like, okay, it's looking for an async function. Where did I forget to put an async? And then you you know look through your code and that's how you kind of just troubleshoot real quick because you're gonna screw that up all the time. So here's our values, right? This is our typical you know, transaction. You've seen it a million times. Now, here's our transaction hash. We can look that up on the blockchain on ethers. Uh, we'll do that in a couple minutes. We have our from address. We have our gas prices we were talking about, right? So, you know, when we were doing those attacks and we're looking at those for the sandwich attacks, we had the higher gas price so we could front run the victim. And then we, the victim has their regular gas price. And then we had a lower gas price we set when we were selling it. So we make sure that we get that value after the uh, victim raises the price of everything, right? So that's our gas prices. What I'm gonna suggest is that we convert this. This isn't a big number, right? So on Ethereum blockchain, they use big numbers. We had to convert that to something that we understand, which is like GUI and way or ethers, not just this hex value. So we can do that pretty easy with ethers.js. So let's print out our gas price and we'll convert that. Let's print out the hash with that as well as let's print out the number of confirmations, which should be zero for everything. Because as you remember, these are pending transactions, which means they aren't confirmed yet. And as the blocks go by one after another, after another, and it gets included in that block, you get one, two, three, four, et cetera, confirmations. 
and they just keep going. And the more confirmations you get, the better as far as the security of it, that it's gonna you know, stay that way. So let's pull down those values and we can parse all of those out pretty easy, right? We'll keep our console.log, but we're gonna need to grab the gas price and we're gonna need to convert that gas price because it is this random big number uh, hex value. It's, it's not anything useful to us, right? Gas price, random value, we don't know what that is. So we gotta convert that. So how do we convert that? So we'll say gas, price equals transaction dot gas price and you'll see that pops right up for me so now that's our gas price but that's like the you know the the big number value there so let's convert that we'll say converted price equal ethers dot utils dot format ether and that's just a you know a function that we can use within ether's utility modules and what are we going to convert obviously our gas price right so we can say gas price all right perfect so now we should have a converted gas price so that's pretty cool so let's print that out and do the back tick there so we can put some variables in with text we'll say confirmation and we want to print out our confirmation. So we'll say, if you remember, it's dollar sign and then brackets to put a variable in there. And we're just gonna say transaction.con. Actually, is it confirmations? Yeah, I believe it is confirmations. Let's double check that here. Yep, confirmations. So that's our variable we wanna call. All right, cool. So we'll say transaction. That's why that didn't pop up confirmations. And then we're going to do a slash n, which gives us a new line. And after that, we're going to say, okay, let's print out our hash value so we can see it on the blockchain after we convert it and kind of compare. So we'll say, we want to print out our hash. And again, we want to print out a variable. So those dollar sign brackets. And that allows us to do text and variable all within here and print them all out and have them play nice. So we'll say transaction dot hash. And these are popping up because it knows what they are because I have the ethers imported there. So then we're going to print that on another new line. So we'll say slash n. And then let's print out now our converted gas price as well as our original gas price. So we'll say dollar sign bracket and we'll say converted price. And then we'll do another new line here and we'll say dollar sign brackets and we'll say gas price. Boom, and this should all work now. What you're gonna see here is we're gonna grab our gas price. We're going to grab that from transaction.gas price. We're gonna convert that with the ethers utilities and we're gonna format it into ether, right? So when it prints out over here, it should be in ethers format. And we're just gonna print out a bunch of stuff on new lines one after another. So we get a little bit of a picture of what we wanna see. We're gonna say, okay, how many confirmations did this have? This should be zero for everything because these are pending transactions, not already included transactions, and they're from the mempool, so they're they have no confirmations yet. Everything should say zero. We're gonna, you know, double check that. So transaction.confirmations. And then we're gonna put a new line. And after that, we're gonna say, okay, what is our hash so we can look it up on Etherscan when we're done? Okay, transaction dot hash. Okay, perfect. We're gonna put on a new line now, our converted price up there into ether. And then we are going to just grab the regular gas price and print that out. All right, cool. This should all work, I'm pretty sure. Um, we will find out in about one second here. So let's see, control S that to save it. And instead of getting all this stuff back, we're gonna see just what we wanna see now. So. Let me pull this up here a little bit, make it smaller so I have it all within here. All right. So we'll say get pending again. 
and then it should start scrolling all of that. And as you'll see, we have confirmation, new line, hash, new line, the ethers value, new line, the original value that we converted, which is that big number value. Okay, cool. So that's awesome. So now let's just take a look at this here and it might have confirmations already if it was included in a block because those happen every 15 seconds if it was selected out of the mempool. So let's pull that up here. So I'm going to say ether scan and I'm gonna search here. All right, so we have this one B. It looks like it has three block confirmations now in between when we were doing things. And if we look, okay, our Ethereum value is, transaction fee is 00009553. And if we look here, that is actually a little bit off here, which is interesting. Uh, Might have changed because there's max and minimum values. Let's see if any of these other guys match up this one here. And we'll paste this in here. Oh, wrong one here. Look up this transaction hash. And this one is still pending. This is saying 00687. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, yeah, 293477. 293477, perfect. So another thing we can do if we didn't know how to convert those numbers, if there's another way you can do it here, we can say, okay, we converted that to if. Ethereum, so we can go there, boom. And now we have our GUI price right here, 2.934, which if you'll look here, um, the GUI is the 2.934, and that was the Ether that we popped in there. And it also gives you, you know, your, your way price, which that actually might be what came out of that big number there, 293.477, let's double check that. 293477. Yes, yeah, so that was actually the way price we got back. And then we converted the way price into the ether price with that. Where is it here? Format ether. So it just took a gas price that came back was actually in, in way value from that big number, pulled it for us into way. And then we just formatted it into ether. With this info now, you'll be able to better appreciate some of the stuff with the sandwich attacks because you understand the pending transactions, the data in them, the gas values that we're using to get in front of those victims and then raise the price and then profit after with lower gas prices using the higher gas prices to get in front. So we can take a look at all of that in the pending transactions in the mempool. If you were building some kind of bot that monitors these things, takes actions, you know, this is a good starting point. And then, you know, you can look at some Uniswap stuff later. We'll take a look at some of that stuff and what's going on over there inside those exchanges, which correlates to this. The next video is actually going to be in the forensic series, but it's related to this because we're going to start taking a look at how to find those sandwich attacks programmatically with Python and pull them out of the blocks that these pending transactions end up in. That way we can monitor that and forensically take a look at who's doing those attacks and what they look like and how to find them because you know, you're looking at hundreds of transactions to find them yourself without like programming it would be very, very hard, but we can easily do it with some code. So hopefully you learned something here, share it out, write me a comment if you have something you know to add to the conversation or you have a good idea that makes sense in the context of one of these series. And have a great night and thanks for watching.